Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? We've got Team Liquid's Clem in the bottom right side. It's the ESL Asia Weekly number 238. And I've been hunting for these replays for days, and I finally just got them. Dark in the top left side as well. Shout out to um, Cranky Darkling's Light for sending me these replays. I was asking everybody. The admin was meant to upload them, but they accidentally did misclicked it or something and then went on a holiday for a week or, or traveling. I don't know if it was a holiday. They were, they were, they were gone. So uh, I've been hunting them down going, oh, I want to see what happened here. You know, Dark and Clem. I believe that, didn't they play in the previous finals? I think Clem won that one, but it was a very close match and it's kind of cool to see them facing off once again. Now, Clem's going to go with the T-Rex Reaper Wolf. Pretty safe on this map because you'd have this ramp. Um, Dark has been famously all-inning a crazy amount recently. Like, with mixed success, right? Because it, like, it feels like maybe a little bit of his shine from beating Maru in that GSL finals is starting to wear off. Maybe. Seeing the Reaper timing, he does know the barracks is here. And now he sees the second barracks and confirms it. My question is, does he keep flying in with the Overlord or does he try to like hide in case Marines come out? Because sometimes Bjorn and some other guys, they'll stop at two Reapers and this will already be a Marine about to pop out. And then if two Marines pop out under the Overlord, they can kill it. Anyways, Clem's going to come in with the Reaper. Uh, obviously, Clem has been very scary lately. Uh, I think if there's any doubts about Clem's um, play right now, it's going to be on the strategic level, not in the skill level. He's so good mechanically, but he's going to be playing the upcoming uh, Stormgate tournament in Tasteless House. Uh, I assume it's in Tasteless House. I don't know, where, wherever he's doing this, this this Stormgate land in a few days. He's in Korea practicing, which is really cool, but playing Stormgate tournaments, we know he played a lot of Battle Aces as well while that was out. And I think there, there maybe is like the hint of a question about, okay... Are you playing too many games? And I don't think this is a, oh, he's playing non-Starcraft games. For me, I would say maybe Clem needs to go for a walk outside once in a while. You can't be this good at this many games. Like, where does he find the time to play them? Like, for me, I'd be like, I don't know. Maybe we need to hit the gym or something. We got to like, we got to go for like a long walk. I don't know. Go go out for dinner or something. <laughs> he does get the hatchery cancel. I'm just like, how are you, how are you this good? Like, I, I don't imagine there's a lot of time for like, Planning builds and bit getting creative is, is I guess, the, the potential issue there. One Reaper does go down. Good defense by Dark. Now, Dark's going for a Baneling bus, guys. Hasn't pulled off gas. The Reapers don't know about it. We don't have a bunker. He's not non-stop building Marines. It's a lot of Zerglings, which looks pretty normal. Dark likes to build a lot of links to surround your Reapers. We're going to do some Beyond Star Micro. I think he should have ran to the middle of the map. The middle of the map's the best area because you can jump up and down these little ledges here. But Dark knows about it. He's already sending four links around the right side. So the Reapers continue to go north. And they do go down. So we've got five Lings, one drone, four Reapers as well. Three Marines building at a time. Don't mean to backseat too hard about lifestyle, by the way. I just think, I don't know. For, for me, I'm like, man, the amount of hours Clem spends gaming, I, I, I feel like Cheryl's sitting there thinking about StarCraft a bit more. Clem has no idea this is coming, guys. I think he's just dead. Because without Stim, no Hellions, no backup wall... He just has no idea. This is just, he left on gas the whole time, did dark. The third hatchery distracted Clem. Clem didn't have vision. Dude, he might just die. <laughs> I told you guys dark's been all hitting a lot lately and he keeps on doing a good focus on the banelings though. Oh my gosh. Dark pull back, pull back. No, does he just have enough lings to overwhelm anyway? Oh, that baneling, dude, Clem's focus fire is so good. Oh my gosh. And okay, near perfect micro from Clem there. Beautiful hold position with the SCVs to block beautiful focus fire. If he pulled 10 more SCVs from the main, maybe he could have done this. Because if he still had four or five Marines with the SCVs, he could like focus the incoming Banelings and maybe do that. Maybe if, I'd say 97% perfect hold for Clem in terms of like the position he was in was terrible, but he's he's dead, right? No, Hellions, oh my gosh. There's still Banelings though. It's hard to kill Banelings with Hellions. They only do eight damage a shot. It takes four Hellion shots to kill a Baneling, guys. You can see there, <laughs> he only did one shot the first volley. Oh, he gets it. Okay, he needs to get rid of that Baneling as well. He's, he's just done because the Lings are just going to keep rounding and a Cocoon will never die. You can't kill Baneling Cocoons with these units. They don't do enough damage and you can see the Lings and the Banes are trapping him and Dark, oh, he did miss a nice detonate timing there, but he's got a rally of units. He's already done so much damage and Clem's going to have to tap out. Dude, that was an insane set of micro by Clem. And just a, a, another reminder, guys, that if you're a Terran player, you cannot play like Clem. Because if he died that hard, think about how hard we would have died. He actually focused down so many units on that ramp. I want to watch that again. So he pulls back from here. Fair enough. But look at this. SCVs hold the ramp. And the Lings are getting decent surface area. The SCVs were fighting. Maybe a little bit of hold position on the SCVs would have been good, but 
I definitely think if he pulls like more SCVs from here, because remember he's on three command centers, he can get down to about 10 workers here and still be way ahead of Dark because he's got triple mule dropping and he's got better tech. Once Stim kicks in, some medivacs come out, having Marines, like he's just going to be in a great spot, right? Because remember, this is a two hatchery Dark. Never rebuilt his third. He's just got a handful of drones on his natural. So if he pulled a, few, pulled, pulled a few more workers, keeps these like seven Marines alive, that'd be great. But he kind of wants to hold the choke point, so he tries to stand his ground and those Marines, once they go down, Oof. And I gotta say, pulling SCVs from the main while doing what he did on the ramp, that's easier said than done. Nice game to start things off for Dark. All right, all right, all right, guys. We've got Clem in the top left side of the map, getting all in in game one. And uh, yeah, I, I do think two Rex Reaper, low ground wall off. I understand it's Sight Delta. You like to do it because it's safe on that map. Guess what? It's not that safe. We just found that out, didn't we? <laughs> and that's the thing is that there's an element of predictability there. I think Sight Delta for me is the map that Terran players play the dumbest. Um, and what I mean by dumbest is most predictable. Basically, because of the, the features of Sight Delta, I think a very intelligent opponent can very high percentage, uh, at a very high percentage rate, predict what their opponent's going to do. So... I think Clem going for two Rex Reaper there is so predictable. It's 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 most top Terrans, almost every game is two Rex Reaper there. So you could tell Dark is like, I know exactly what I'm gonna do before the game starts. And I, I've studied what you do with your Reapers and I know how to take advantage. So obviously you guys know I've been I've been very critical of that map in TVP where Beyond um and Maru way too often go for three command center builds in the main, which is like a really good sneaky economy build. But they've made the mistake of doing it. 13 times in a row on the same map so it's not sneaky anymore and they keep dying and they even died day one they did it on the new patch when hero storm dropped the crap out of both of them in the gsl group um but yeah it's 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 kind of funny watching the uh that sometimes a map has features that are just too strong for certain things it's hard not to be predictable dude dark's gonna take the front hatchery dude this hatchery is a disaster of a third base He's 100% Ravager Ling all inning. This is way too obvious for Dark. Dark, Dark they, like, I already know exactly what Dark's going to do, guys. He's, he's going to go for a Ravager Ling all in because this third base sucks for a standard game. It's just in a really awkward position, and it doesn't help spread creep towards these bottom two bases that are the actual third and fourth base you want. So we'll see if Clem puts two and two together once he realizes what's up. He isn't even considering that there's a third hatchery there because he's like, well, no one would do that. The, the standard thing is it's good to block your opponent's third on this map because the other third base sucks. <laughs> so Dark's kind of mind gaming right now. I say it's way too obvious. Is it? Is it? I watch a lot more of these guys than they watch of each other. So, so I often just have a bit more up-to-date info on how they're playing. One worker on gas is already peculiar. But I wouldn't be surprised to see two more put back on there sometime before four minutes. And then a, a Roach Warren and a second and a third gas potentially. We're already going up to 13 Zergling. So he's going to start with Ling run buys. This is a classic way of playing against Clem. Keep uh, Hellions move out. Lings run in. Hellions move out. Lings run in. Hellions move out. Lings run in. See this, guys? He's going to chase the Reaper down if he can get it. Same time. Hellions come out. Those Lings just ran around them. He saw them leave. Gets the Reaper. Hellions are chasing him. And even just three Zerglings, gonna waste some mining time. Luckily for Clem, Clem has God tier SCV micro, and he quickly repairs, so he doesn't actually lose any SCVs yet. Oh my gosh, his micro is good. Still loses a bunch of mining time for three Zerglings. That's still good, and because this now clears up the Hellion map vision, allows these Lings to get ready for the run by. Now, oddly enough, his Overlord is there. It should be on the pillar. Surely it should be on the pillar. This is a bizarre Overlord position for him, and he's gonna find out in a moment. He's actually going Evo Chamber, my man. My man ain't doing a Ravager Ling. What can I say, guys? I'm completely wrong. Dark's a genius. Clem knows about the third base. Comes in. Doesn't see any drones. It's only 4.15. It's pretty early. Oh, Lings get us around on the Hellion. That is big. Hellion and the Marine go down instantly. Another Hellion goes down. Oh, no. Oh, Clem just lost two Hellions as they spawn. Oh, no. Oh, my lord. His SCV count's getting ravaged. Dark with the sneaky Ling run buys. This is how Dark first shut down Clem's win streak in 2021. When we thought Clem was going to be the next best thing in the world and no one could beat him and Dark showed constant sneaky Ling run buys was a hard counter to him. Because Clem is only in his element when he's attacking. When he's defending, he's good. But he is the best Terran of all time. Unstoppable when he's in your face multitasking. And look, he moves out again. The Lings are waiting for it. The Liberator doesn't see. And the Lings click in every single time. And you should know this is coming. 
Every time Dark does this, he does it this way, but Clem's not adapting. Clem is not adapting right now. He he knows. After Dark did this to him 20 series in a row, Clem adapted and Clem has started to dominate Dark recently. Remember guys, Clem used to have like a one win for every six losses to Dark. He Dark was a nemesis the last year. That's turned around. Clem started beating him a lot more often than he loses. And I think Clem might even be ahead in their, their head to head win rate. It's very even between the two now but he's got to pull back and defend his natural. The lings do show themselves that time. Accidentally misrallied some to the right, so Clem does pull back. But if he didn't see that, I'm not sure he would have. And Clem, the best defense is a good offense, is basically burnt into his forehead. You know how Harry Potter has a lightning scar? I, I feel like Clem's dad branded him with a, if you ever stop attacking, you're no longer my blood, and I, I will disown you as a bastard child, you know? It, there, there, there's something in his blood where he must attack at all times. He's going to keep going. He's going to find some damage. Five drones. Dude, obviously that's including the liberated damage earlier. Not a bad start, but the Hellions are getting jumped on. This creep spread is great. Those Hellions, they're all so low. That Hellion goes down, but does escape with three of these Hellions by the looks of it. You want to pull that one back. Oh, loses another. Dude, Dark's still going for it. Clem's Micro is good, but I mean, there's only so far you can get with Micro. Doesn't have many units backing this up. Those Hellions are a little bit exposed as well. More Lings trying to come in. Dark's looking a little eager right now. Dark has thrown some recent matches in the StarCraft 1 mod by getting too over-eager with Zergling Aggression, so we'll see what he does here. Uh, two macro hatcheries coming up. This is the Dark special. Um, does he have a Baneling Nest? No Baneling Nest. Second Evo Chamber now coming in. His lair's a bit late, so he can't start plus two Carapace straight away. But uh, sloppy kind of haphazard macro, but just mass hatchery like explosive growth for dark so it doesn't matter he's only on one two three gases four five gas he's going to five gas okay fair enough liberator repairs comes back in for round two for some reason dark doesn't have an overlord on the bottom edge which is an oversight he's so quick at reacting does it matter well if he doesn't pull his drones away it will matter guys sorry bad observing there accidentally locked onto that queen and that drone line liberator pulls back to the side Overlord barely survives. Dark's work account is not great. I really thought he'd have more momentum off this opening, guys, but he does not. 11 drones are now building. Only 59 workers. Very similar supply. Let's check the infrastructure of Clem. Clem's getting up his fourth and fifth reactor momentarily. He's also got a second factory building. An armory's coming in, so he will be able to start 2-2 in the near future. Plus 2 carapace has already started. So Dark's ahead on the plus 2 carapace. He'll be behind on the upgrade, uh, the attack upgrade. And... It looks like Clem's going to build a fourth command center soon. I mean, if you're going double upgrades, fast second factory, no eight racks yet. I think as soon as he gets 400 minerals, Clem will be going in that direction. The supply is neck and neck. Dark now with a five worker lead. Mass Zergling is here. Uh, it does save most of those Marines. Good hot pickup. Fourth command center goes down. He's got to start his 2-2 in the midst of this, does Clem. He starts plus two attack. Meanwhile, unloading there. Didn't quite have the money for plus two armor. And there we go. He starts it now. Beautiful play by Clem. Now, for Dark, his economy doesn't seem that big. Liberator comes back in, gets two more drones. Queens do finally deal with that. And I definitely want to see Dark plug that hole in his vision on the south. Yeah, you can see he sent four overlords down here to realizing having no vision on the south is really bad. Queens pushing those medevacs out of the main. And we are going to be finding ourselves in a proper macro game. Plus two carapace lead there for Dark. He's got about a 45 second lead on that upgrade. But his melee is about 45 seconds behind. So it should balance out. That being said, attack versus armor is the most important interaction in this matchup in terms of Terran attack versus Erg armor because ranged units, high damage glass cannon units that are all about gunning down the enemy before they get on top. Like Banelings don't really care about upgrades that much, right? Whereas Marines, oh, okay, a couple die, but not too many. He hadn't unloaded too many guys. That's not too bad for him at all. We'll see how we go. Three more barracks are coming in. It's going to be eight barracks. I like the safety tank on the high ground. Against Dark, you never know when he's going to YOLO you. Oh, oh, this is a big push to the south. Okay, so Clem is playing very brave. The danger of doing this with splitting your army up to the edges so much is remember that Science Delta game versus Maru in the finals. If you guys don't remember it, basically Maru sent all of his Marines to go harass around the map and Dark just shoved up the middle and just wiped his production, just wiped his entire economy. Dark, if he thinks he can't fight you on the edges and you're being too annoying with your positioning... He'll shove up the guts. Speak of the devil. It's not that big an army, though, for Dark. And Clem's northern army nearby, especially with the rally. Really good defense by Clem. 
All right, so Hydra upgrades coming in. Uh, Groove Spines is already there. Muscle Organs on the way, plus two melee, plus one range on the way. Hive is on the way as well. The double macro hatch is really nice because Dark struggles with his injects. And when I say struggles, like, that's probably not the right word. He ignores his injects. He just doesn't care for them that much. It's not a big focus for him. Tanks are going to get taken out by Lings. Oh, there was a good Widow Mine to, to punish. Sporkrill is going to get some damage. It's a bit of a YOLO. There are Queens and Hydras coming up in large numbers. They will try to focus these medevacs down. If you can kill a bunch of the Queens, that'll be good. One medevac has already fallen. We've got to get out. One of those medevacs is deep in the red. Clem gets out. Army in the north has to be careful. Running up a ramp into Banelings. But Clem's reaction speed, second to none. Great Widow Mine shot to start things off. Second Widow Mine, not as big. But great positioning for Clem to keep things going. Now... 2,000, 2,500 resource lost advantage. Clem is winning this game right now. But Dark's getting to, to Hive Tech, and he's got a good economy. Not, oh, oh, Baneling connection. Uh, yep, big fight, big fight here for Dark. Widow Mines, not getting big shots off at all. Very good fight for Dark, guys. Very good fight for Dark. Okay, so this is actually going to be really good. So basically, the reason I'm worried for Clem is even though Clem's getting mass command center, there's a vulnerable point before all those command centers come up where he's got a good army, he's trading really well, but the way Clem does this, it gives him great efficiency for now. He's 2,200 resources ahead. Remember, he was 2,500 ahead a minute ago. Watch the difference. So remember, 2,200 is the gap. We want to see how that changes because Dark has this special ability to out-trade Clem at this stage of the game if Clem makes any slip-ups. Hydras are out. Viper's coming as well. Marines focusing down. Banelings, pretty good focus fire, but look, the Hydras focus, the Medivacs as well. I think there's enough Ling Hydra to do okay here. Units lost up. Back to two and a half thousand now. So slight gain there for Clem. Clem needs good, good fights. He needs good fights. Another Medivac gets shot down. Widow Mine with a big friendly fire. Oh, Clem's in trouble. Clem is in trouble. Those Widow Mines are separated from the main pack of his army. But he does manage to protect most of those mines. Now, the reason this style's so scary is Clem doesn't build tanks, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. I've talked to him about this. He says that if he builds tanks, it gives up a bit too much momentum. And he understands tanks can be good but it's more of Maru's style. It's not really his style. His style is to play like a Zerg, dominate the map, mass expand, and keep trading. He doesn't like giving up the chance to attack. He feels like his best strength, and I think he's right, is when he's attacking. But he's, he's been the first to admit when I said, well, don't you feel like it's a bit fragile? Because if one fight goes really bad, that explosive Zerg production will dive on you, and, and you can just get killed by a counterattack. If you don't have extra planetaries and stuff up yet, like, you can just die. And he said, yeah, you need to be really good with your army control. It's not a forgiving style but that's how I like to play. And that's what I like to hear from a pro player saying, oh yeah, I know this is like a bit dangerous, but I know if I do it perfectly, it's dominating. And I'm just going to try to do it perfectly. Blinding Cloud coming down on the ramp, dude. He focused a lot of Banelings before the Blinding Cloud came down and he avoided running his units into the into the Baneling Hydra. We're up to 4,000 difference in the units lost. He's out trading. I mean, he's doing it well. Don't get me wrong. It's fragile. One big mistake can cost him. But I think right now, Clem's getting a bigger lead as time goes on. Because remember, he's got mules. He's got 77 workers. He's on five base against a Zerg who technically has a sixth. But Dark isn't really mining on that sixth base. Now, he's going to start losing a bit of value here as these guys do go down to abducts, to parasitic bombs. A little bit of the value will go by him. But remember, Clem's got a better income. So even if he trades evenly, he should maybe not be winning but at least doing okay. If he out-trades Dark, he should be crushing. Now, you might, you might be wondering, well, if you've got better income and you're trading evenly, why does why is that not great? The reason it's not great is because Terran is spending way more money on infrastructure. Dark, is he's got all of his hatcheries. All Dark spending money on right now is Ling, Bane, Hydra, and that means he has way more army reprodu reproduction potential. That's why even though he's getting out-traded, he's still maxed the whole time with a little bit of bank. Clem, on the other hand, is dumping his money into command centers. Five minutes from now, those command centers will pay off. Right now, those are a risky investment. Here we go. Dark's, Dark's getting excited. Dark's going to go for it. Dark's going to try and punish right now. The Widow Mines on the right side are not going to be able to help this. These building command centers are exposed. Link Bane Hydra up the guts. The Baneling Morph on the front. It's the classic Dark maneuver. One of his favorites just going YOLO. Two command centers go down. Snipes on the Overseers are coming down. A lot of those Overseers do get taken out. Bit of a mistake there on the Siege up for Dark. Dark loses all of his Overseers. He's massively supply blocked. He's trying to overwhelm right now. This is a massive YOLO. I think Clem's handled this perfectly. He's still got Bio in the top right that can come into Bear. And he just shuts this army down. He falls back from both sides, defends the middle. It is now a 6,000 resource loss gap. This is massive. Oh, here we go. Hydraling Bane coming forward. Banelings get some decent detonations, but this is like a one-shot and done. 
Tank on the left does go down, but not before it gets some big shots off. The last couple of lings will get taken out by ghosts. The couple of hydras do escape. Tails between their legs. Quite literally, you can see those little tails wiggling as they try to get out of there. They do speed up as they get on creep. Hydras escape. But as I said, 6,000 resource loss deficit. Clem is permamax this entire time with more commands than it's floating out. And if Clem doesn't make any mistakes in these fights, this style looks amazing. It looks unstoppable and it feels oppressive as the Zerg because you're going, I'm playing Ling Bane Hydra. I'm meant to be the mobile guy. I'm meant to be dominating the map. This Psychopath has Widow Mines behind your sixth base. He's got middle control of the map. You have no creep spread. Your overlords are dying like crazy. We've lost five overlords and 10 overseers this game, which Dark needs to fix that up. He keeps rallying to the center of the map. And Clem's macro is just unperturbed this entire time. 13 medevacs are out for non-stop healing. Dark cannot keep pace with Clem. And that is a game back in the vein of what Clem wanted to happen. No mistakes, constantly out trading, constantly out microing, and not letting Dark get the better of him. Even though Dark had some very successful Ling run buys at the start, Dark's follow-up was simply not macro-centric enough. And we have to realize that when you build those Zerglings to do run buys, yeah, you're doing damage, but you are sacrificing economy to do it. There's whole gaps here where he was not building drones in this early game. Every time he builds two Zerglings, in this case four, that's two drones. Eight Zerglings, that's four less drones that he could have built, right? And that really does stack up. The third base over here is a little awkward as well, though it does allow him a bit of an easier path to sneak Lings around the north side if the Hellions were more in his face. I thought he'd be able to get his economy up a lot higher to like 70 or 75 much sooner. I guess for me, the big surprise was that at like six and a half, seven minutes, Dark was still sitting on 59 workers. And that was kind of shocking to me. And I'm sure I could probably break this down and just find missed injects. Yeah, I mean, this hatchery wasn't injecting for a while while he was defending Hellion Lib. He wasn't injecting his main for a long time either. So I think he missed a lot of injects, which is very classic dark. Focused on his Ling run buys a lot. And while they were somewhat successful, just you could see he's floating 700 minerals while going up to one, two, three, four bases plus two macro hatcheries. This is something you're not meant to see in a pro match. Um, if Lambo or any other Zerg saw this, they'd be like, dude, this is a terrible execution of macro. That means you are floating thousands of resources. And even after spending all these hatcheries, because remember, three, four, three hatcheries, that's 1,200 minerals. He was still floating 800 minerals. Dark essentially floated 2k minerals in the early game. Tactically brilliant with his Zerglings. Very bad fundamentals. Cost him this game. All right, all right, all right. Clem is tying up the series there. I gotta say, some mistakes in his early game though, guys. I, I I would be very critical of the start of that game. Moving out after the first Ling run by with no new Hellions at home, Cure would never have done that. <laughs> Cure plays a much safer early game because he's not as mechanically, psychotically crisp as Clem. But Clem's gonna go back to the low ground Reaper wall off. Now, I think he's hoping to catch Dark going for his gasless three hatchery build, thinking he can punish him with like the, the Reaper harass. That being said, um, honestly, if Dark just stops crapping the bed uh, every time he's playing against Reaper Aggression with his gasless build, he could do fine. There's, there's been a funny thing where Dark has been next level at just predicting basically when people are going to go for 2 Rex Reaper Aggression, and he always goes fast link speed these days. So he never really gets caught out with it. But um, I, I feel like on this map and others that he used to love doing his gasless 3 hatchery into Roaches, the main problem he had is the moment he realized he was getting Reaper pre pressured, he just would forget to build his first Overlord after... So he'd always get supply blocked really bad on 28 and he couldn't drone while defending. <laughs> and he'd just end up like four workers behind from where he should be. So I, I, I mean, I love that he's once again predicted his opponent going two racks Reaper Wolf and he's gone Hatch Gas Pool and he is doing this at a higher percentage of the time. So obviously there's more chance of him predicting that. But I'd actually like to see him go back to the Gasless build, mix it in. Um, because, yeah, his, his fast three hatch gasless, well, that, that is demanded responses from Terran players. When they don't respond to that well enough, he just gets too far ahead, right? And, and gets in such a good position for the rest of the game. Uh, we want more highlights. Uh, can we go back to the ad break? Guys, we'll get highlights. This is a dark versus Clem game. They're coming, okay? They're, they're, they're hidden within the game. This is like a... Russian, what is it, Russian doll sort of situation? You know, you gotta you gotta unwrap the layers here, okay? It's Clem versus Dark. We'll get we'll get some highlights. Uh whether it's because Dark's hitting him with some big surprise moves or Clem's gonna micro his way to victory. It's one or the other. Dark could get him with multi-prong later on as well. How's that game sound, by the way, guys? It does feel a little bit quiet for me. You guys let me know if it's a bit too quiet. I think it's okay. Obviously, when it's just a Reaper shooting, it's kind of meant to be a little soft. It's meant to be a bit more loud when there's a big battle going on. 
Third hatchery going down on the left. I actually like this third hatchery location. Now, this is going to be four Reapers, guys. So, very similar setup. I think it was only... Was it only three or was it four? I think it was four on uh, Site Delta as well in game one. That'd be funny if he just puts two workers back on gas and makes a Banely Nest again. That would be the ultimate asserting dominance from Dark. But uh, <laughs> it looks like, no, he's not that crazy. Just going to go across with his lings to try and snipe add-ons. Which is a good call. If you get that reactor, that's a really big pickoff. So you notice Clem's building a marine right now. But he's going to lose the reactor. I mean, you'll get the money back, but it's the build time that's big. Drone and hatchery do go down. You can see the units lost tab. There's the minerals from the hatchery as well as the drone. Reactor does get cancelled there as well, guys. And you'll see, that's interesting. It doesn't actually show 12 minerals, 12 gas. Okay, so it does show, yeah, yeah. That's how much you lose from that cost. More Ling's coming across right now. This is uh, a big Ling commitment, 16. But I think he knows that Clem just likes to be greedy on the map. So he's like, hey, if you are on the map at all, I will punish you. And oh, he's going to prepare. He's going to break down these, these entrances probably. Not a bad move. And look at this, Clem's paranoid because he's playing Dark. Last time in this scenario, he got Baneling busted. This time he's trying to keep the Reapers alive. I think they've been spotted though. I like that he kind of shows them to the Overlord, but then oh, I would have liked him to hide them on the left because Dark saw the Reapers leave on the left. If he moved left and just hit his Reapers back here, Dark would be like scouring the top of the map going, where are the Reapers? Roach Warren and Double Gas, it's going to be a Ravager Ling all in. Ravager Ling all in. Dark has been spamming out Ravager Ling all ins like crazy, guys. Like he's been doing these so much. Unfortunately for him, it's two racks into Quick Banshee. Counters this build. So Clemmer has the build counter here. As long as he gets these Banshees out in time. And I think by the time the Roaches hit him, he should have the, the Ravages. Now, the only problem is if he rallies this Banshee past the Overlord, the Overlord will see it and Dark will probably either go back to droning or he'll hide his units, wait till the Banshees arrive on his side of the map and then go in. This is something Dark kind of screwed up a few times, in my opinion, recently, where if he sees a Banshee, he just like... Sometimes he doesn't hide his units and he just shoves in anyway and, and loses his whole army, but... If there's two Banshees and a pack of Marines in a bunker, like, you ain't going to get much done. Reapers are going to get gunned down, though. Or ch chased down, I should say. How many Zerglings are they getting, though? A lot of weak Lings. Might be Focus Fire time. Goes back to the right. Yeah, focus the red point one. You know you want to. He, he focused it. He focused the last one there. I kid you not. 12 Lings for four Reapers. It's a pretty even trade. Ravages are being made. His first Banshee flies out. Clem. Clem, Clem, Clem. His Banshee fly flies across the map. Big mistake. Big mistake for Clem. It, it would have been perfect timing on two Banshees arriving outside of his base. But he comes in. He's like, oh, okay. There's not a hatchery there. I guess you took the other one. No worries. Oh. And his stim's going to go down. He sold his bunker. He sold his bunker, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, gee. Back to the ramp. High ground. You need to go to the high ground. You cannot defend this low ground, and you need to start supply dropping right now. He's going to lose all of his barracks production. Remember, with this build, your only defense is the Banshees. Clem, though, was aggressively minded against Dark, and that's an issue right now. Remember, guys, if you do a... Oh, no, 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 the Banshee goes down to the piles. Somehow, it only takes two piles. Somehow. He can't take a single... Another one, though. The SCVs have not evacuated. The Banshee is dodging. The Marines are on the high ground. Is that going to be enough? The Ravages are going down. Banshee does keep dodging. He knows he can't take a single bile. He actually killed four of his own Zergans there. But 26 SCVs have already gone down. He's got triple mule. He, he can win this game, guys. If Clem just holds on and keeps like 20 SCVs alive, he's ahead. The Ravagers are going down. There's just nothing left to shoot, though. And so many SCVs are about to fall. So many SCVs are about to go down. It's the last 10 seconds of this fight where so much damage comes in. And uh, there's a difference. If you're on 10, 15 SCVs here against 25, it's not bad. Nine SCVs, units still rallying in. No ability to really stabilize here. Oh, 50 workers going down. I mean, obviously you stay in here, but you've got to pull off gas, drop mules, and see what you can do. There's more coming in as well. Those Hellions, those Hellions going to get surrounded. Oh no, Clem loses one of the Hellions. The Banshees are here, but dude, flying that Banshee across, got a few workers, it cost him big time. He also lost that Banshee on the other side of the map, though. It did kill about 10 workers on the other side, though. To be fair, he killed like 10 drones, so it was actually a surprising amount of damage. And somehow only three more SCVs going down, but without a wall off, you're just not going to stabilize. Like, he needs to float this command center over, plonk that down in the wall off, because if he can't staunch the flow, I'm telling you, man, he needs he needs a extra jumbo uh, Banshee right now because he's got a staunch a heavy flow we're talking about uh bloody avalanche zerglings and dark's going back to droning he's on 43 workers how many drones died this game 12 12 died to the banshee before that's like that first banshee goes in and does killer damage and yet 
I guess one drone died to the Reaper, so 11 to the Banshee. That's still crazy damage, but turns out losing uh, 59 SCVs, that's crazier damage. Clem's going to have to tap out. GG. All right, all right, all right, guys. Down one to two. He's going to win the next two maps in a row. And for once, it's not coming out in game five. Amphion. Two ranks Reaper again. Ooh, and he builds it at the front, which is interesting. I guess he just wants to be in position for the add-ons, but I think the Reapers will naturally run this way to go the fastest, jump down the ledge. And Reapers get in there pretty early on this map, so I actually feel like I'm surprised we don't see more Reaper aggression on this map, to be fair, because you get in there so early with these early Reapers. Now, the the, the game five thing, Dark almost always plays this map, game five, Amphion, and he always goes hatch gas pool, but he's not. He's going gasless three hatch. Wow. So remember I was saying he keeps, he keeps, and I think Clem's trying to catch him doing that with the Reaper aggression. The Reaper aggression should do big damage because your, your queens are not going to be particularly early. Actually, you know, his pool was okay time. He does build the correct queen first. Reaper's on, on its way across the map. There will be a command center coming down. This is not like an all-in Reaper aggression. And I always feel like, remember what I said, Dark always forgets his overlord and gets supply blocked on 28 when he sees Reapers coming off this build. He needs to build an overlord with his next 100 minerals. Dark has 100 minerals. He starts the overlord. Dark makes the adjustment that I was talking about in the previous map. Dark, that's the first time Dark builds his overlord immediately while defending this build in the last three months. This is actually the next evolution of Dark. He remembered the overlord. He has made an adjustment. Oh my gosh. I, I'm, I know I'm exaggerating, but I kid you not. I never expected Dark to not be supply blocked right here at 245. This has been the big problem he's had every time he's done this build recently. He gets caught by the two ranks Reaper. He makes the adjustment. And, and this is the thing is, I feel like you don't fall behind against this build if you don't get massively supply blocked repeatedly. Now he's building another Overlord. Perfect timing for this extra Overlord. Guys, he's actually doing this so well. He has to make sure he doesn't lose his Queens though. The Lings, so far, has he lost anything? Two Lings only. He's only lost two Zerglings. Queens have the ramp control. How many Reapers is this? Four. Four Reapers, and that's it. You haven't found any real damage. He doesn't need to defend the hatchery. Just stay on the high ground, spread the creep, making three Queens, making drones. Yes, you're on equal workers right now, but remember, that command center is not even finished yet for Clem. Your third hatchery is finished. You've got so much lava coming up, but oh no, you can't lose the Queens. One Reaper goes down. I think a Reaper for a Queen's not a bad trade for Clem. He'd like to kill that other one. Gets a few Zerglings here. Ooh, Clem getting very fancy with his Reaper Micro. Now, Link Speed's not going to finish for a while, so you want to preserve these Reapers, keep being active with them, slow down the creep, and keep Dark distracted so he's not injecting. Dark's got two injects down already. His natural oversaturated nicely. That's a good thing. I say that like it's a good thing. You know, it's just slightly oversaturated, which is good right now, because Dark is a mineral-hungry boy. Three hatcheries producing lava, injects going down, and Clem's two ranks Reaper opening. Does it put him ahead here? I would argue it does not at all. On the other hand, Stim's done. Metavac's coming in. He's going to go for a 2 on one follow-up. His third command center is about to finish. It might be even. I think if we're, if, we're, if we're being positive for Clem, it's even. If we're being negative, he's a little behind. Maybe very behind. Dark does hit a 58 supply block in an effort to give him a chance to catch back up on the workers. So Dark uh, does have an Overlord popping, though, and he's straight back into drones. Like, but these supply blocks aren't as brutal as the standard Dark supply blocks. Quick grenade there does allow those Reapers to escape without losses. Great, great play. Could get himself a creep tumor or two, but Dark spreading creep very nicely. Ooh, hello. Roachhorn coming in, guys. What do we got? Roachhorn. 51 drones. Double gas in the main. Dark still pounding out drones. Seventh queen on the way as well. He's adding gases on the natural. Clem needs to get a move on with the next pressure because he is down 20 workers and that number's going to grow. Only two SCVs building right now. Has he got his orbital up? Oh, he's floating it. That's why. Can only build two. Obviously, you can't build workers while your command center is floating. That is what it is. Dark's double Evo at 510. Only seconds behind the engineering base of Clem. 20 worker advantage. If you have similar upgrade timings and a 20 worker advantage, it's, it's a very good start for the Zerg. I wonder if Dark goes all in with Roaches. Does he do the Nidus Swarm? Because pretty much... Every time I see Roaches on this map as a Terran, I'd be scouting over here for the Nidus Worm. Rogue and Dark both won far too many games with this build recently uh, against top tier Terran opposition. Clem died to it. Maru died to it. A ton of people have died to it. It should be in the forefront of their mind. No Link Speed, no Roaches. Oh, Dark being too greedy. That lead I was talking about is going goodbye. Or is it? Drones fighting? Oh, so many drones are dying though. And you can see he even focus fired the drones. He gets 21 drones and saves the Metavax. 
Saves the medevac, saves the marines. The reapers in behind the third don't get too much damage done. Looks like maybe they killed, like, they kill a roach. Maybe they killed a drone as well, but they do get out of there. The marines go back in for more. Clem uh, gets a queen. His marines are so damaged, but there's so few queens. They don't have much damage themselves. And gets himself another queen, gets in, gets out. Worth it. Two more marines for two more queens. That's a trade I'll take any day. And Clem has got to be happy with that. He's now holding down the SCV key. He's only behind 10 workers. The fourth hatchery is only just starting. Clem is right back into this game. And it's purely because Dark was just a bit too greedy on being ready for that drop. The double upgrade timing, I think, was a bit too aggressive. And you'll notice he's quite far behind on the upgrades now. Well, 20, maybe 25 seconds, something like that. At best. Eh, maybe 20 seconds. Um, but I think the Evo Chamber timing was a bit too aggressive. I think he should have delayed those Evos maybe 30 seconds, made the Roaches and the Evos about the same time. With the, 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 the Roaches, getting five to eight Roaches out just for the defense was, was very important, and he just delayed them too long. Nice cancel on the fourth here for Clem. A Reaper and a few Marines. She's using whatever he's got. Clem's in the lead now. Second factory, Armory. But he's playing against Mass Roach. And against Mass Roach, you want to be defensive rather than aggressive. Second factory, Armory, three tanks, one on the high ground. I like the tank positioning. It's actually really nice. It's a little layer of tanks that you can retreat on. When Ravagers come in, you want to fight out front with your Marines so the Ravagers can't get in range to bile them easily. Gets rid of a Creep Tomb here. He's going to go after the Overlord dude. Clem's all over this game. I really feel like Dark's opening put him ahead. And then Dark's greed plus Clem's decisive aggression now puts... Dark behind it. It's the Nidus Worm. He's still going for the Nidus Worm. I talked about this at the start of the game, guys. We should always be expecting that Nidus Worm. He's got vision at the edge of his main, so he should spot it coming in. The question is, can Dark distract him enough on the front that the Nidus Worm catches him off guard? It's a 62 drone, 1-1 one, one, Roach Ravager all in with a Nidus Worm. He's going up against what is now a second factory with a tech lab about to start pumping tanks. That tank count is huge. Now remember, if the Roaches get out in the main, you cannot filter into them and fight with only half your army. Now, Clem is moving out, which means... Oh, gosh, this is going to get weird. Clem's attacking into a 1-1 one -one Roach all-in. Why is he attacking right now? Why is he attacking? I think he just senses that he's ahead, and he is. But against a Roach Ravager all-in, that you know there's no drones on the floor. There's no reason for Clem to attack right now. Clem's just basically saying, I'm far enough ahead, I can kill you. It's a classic Clem decision. It's attacking when then there is no need to attack. On a strategic level... He's attacking when defending is the superior decision. He does lose one tank, but he kills a lot of the Roach Ravager. Unfortunately, he's distracted himself, which means the Nidus Worm in the back is going to pop. Oh, no! Clem caught with his pants down. Clem caught with his pants down. Mass Roach inside the main base. Remember what I said? He has to abandon the left side of his base, defend on the right side. He cannot split his army up too much. Nice hold position on the SCVs. He's actually blocking a lot of these Roaches. He's repairing the tank. Dude! Oh, the Vials do take it out. Though. The Marines and the SCVs have to get out of there. He's got to run. Run away from this man you cannot fight here clem this is the mistake everyone makes is they try to fight on the high ground you got to just lift your production and float it away it feels bad but look at that biles landing on the ramp oh god the marines are trying to get up there he feels like he's got to get to the high ground clem was ahead in this game but choosing to attack was not the play and dark defends with roach ravager and counter attacks with the nidus worm and now clem loses his entire main base huge mistake for clem he's gonna lose all oh, plus one vehicle weapons gets taken down all of his production's ransacked. Look at his marine production. It's very low right now. He's only on five barracks, most of which are floating to rebuild add-ons. He has like two reacted barracks in his natural. That's about it. He has a few tanks here, but he can't defend this area. And Dark is picking up value. Dark goes infestation pit, two, two, and more drones. Dark realizes winning the game on that low ground, not very possible. But, dude, these marines are so damaged. These marines are so wounded. The roaches are like, hey, any fight's a good fight. Let's just take it. Filing these tanks down and the medevacs taking some damage. Dude, amazing fight for Dark. Because he gets rid of all the Marines. He gets rid of the tanks. Does he lose a lot of units to these two tanks on the low ground? Sure, they do some good support. But that's going to be a win for Dark. Dark wins this game right here, right now. Clem has to tap out. And when you're ahead, pushing and not letting the game go any longer is a gift. It really is a gift. It's a beautiful thing. And I've talked about it a lot with players who are too defensive that they sometimes get a lead. And then they just sit in their corner and they don't do anything with it. But I think for Clem, there's a really basic, there's, there's two things working here. From the Terran perspective, you know their fourth base isn't finished, which means Zerg is stuck on 66 workers. You're on 71. You build a fourth command center right now, and you are getting miles ahead. Like, miles and miles ahead. So that's number one. Number one is you can just get ahead by defending, right? And if you get maxed out, that's always really good for a Terran. The bigger the armies get, that, that tends to get good for Terran. But 
The second reason is you know you're playing against Roach Ravager. You scouted the Roaches, you know about them. And when we play against Roach Ravager, what do we know as a Terran? In theory, Roaches, really good in the middle stage, up to about 150, 160 supply. Once the Terran gets closer to maxed out, the Roaches fall off really hard because they're not supply efficient. Two supply for a Roach, three supply for a Ravager, very bad stats for both of these units for that supply cost, very low damage. Which means if your opponent's maxed on Roach Ravager, it's really bad. So Roach Ravager basically is used to protect from these sorts of pushes super efficiently, way better than Ling Bane, or to do an all-in of your own. So the way you play strong against Roach Ravager is you don't push until you're almost maxed. Uh, you, you kind of you wait for a really big maxed out timing attack if you are going to push when your army scales so much better than theirs. Or you just defend and you just turtle it out and make sure their Roach Ravager all-in can't find a good fight on you. This is why strategically what Clem chose to do was a risky decision. I'm not going to say it's the wrong decision because StarCraft is a game where there are built-in risks. But I do think because it's both, we know there's no drones on a fourth, fourth wasn't finished, and we know our opponent's on a composition that scales very badly whilst Al scales very well. Strategically, the decision he made was an unnecessary risk. And hell, you could go so far as to say an unnecessary risk is basically the definition of a bad decision and the wrong decision, pig. And you know what? I think you have me there. Well played by Dark. Great decisive play, very aggressive. I think his opening was fantastic this game, guys. And I just want to bring it back to what Dark could have done better. Because these points are things. We're going to see these builds probably repeated in the World Championship coming up. There's no need to build these Evo Chambers. He, as long as he builds Roaches here straight away, is he ready in time? His Roach Horns just finished and he built another five workers. If these five drones were five Roaches, I think he'd actually be way better off against this. Because those Roaches would be popping in the next five seconds and it'd still be a bit of a bad, awkward position. But uh, it would it would just be a little bit easier to have roaches popping out. Imagine if he has roaches popping out right now. He can run his drones a little bit more and eventually defend this. But losing the 21 workers here was massive. Really well played by both sides. Dark though, decisive aggression and so many all-ins continue to get him a ton of wins against top-tier Terran opposition. GG well played Dark.